Hello guys and gals and welcome to a new tutorial. In today's video we're going to be covering these cute little wind wisps that you can see on the screen. They're quite stylized so they can work really really well in certain environments and certain projects but they're so cute I love them. Now you may have noticed that some of the channel art has changed for one my face is gone. Oh no my beautiful face. Uh, the reason for this is all thanks to you guys. Um, thanks to your support very recently, Epic has awarded me an Epic Mega Grant to help the channel grow. So thank you. A little round of applause for everybody else. There you go. That's for you. Okay. Let's get on with the tutorial. That's the formalities out of the way. Now, this is actually a really, really simple system to set up. We're just going to need a very simple material and one particle system. We're using 4.25.1. So let's get on with this. First thing we'll do is we will create our material. So in our content browser, right click material and we will call this M underscore wind lines and we will just open this up. Now we don't want this to be affected by wind. Come on, maximize you. We don't want this to, to be affected by light rather. We do want it to be affected by wind. Ha <laughs> uh, ha. So what we were going to do is we're just going to set this to a translucent unlit material like so. Next thing we will need, right click and search for a particle color in that gross American spelling. Sorry, not sorry. And we will just plug the RGBA straight into the emissive color. And now to stop this from just being a nasty white sphere here and having really harsh edges, we're going to use a radial gradient. So right click radial gradient exponential. And if you've watched any particle system tutorial, you know what this is. It creates a circle. So we're going to hold M, left click for multiply, and we'll plug our alpha into the A, our radial gradient into the B, and then this straight into the opacity. And then this is going to give us a nice fall off for a dot. There we go. Cool. <clears throat> we will apply and save our material. And next, right click particle system, P underscore wind lines. We will open this guy up like so, and you can see now we just have this nasty spray of particles using the default little crosshair. We're going to leave those there for now, and you'll find out why later. Um, but the very first thing that we're going to do is we're going to name our particle emitter. Don't just leave your emitters called particle emitter. Anybody else that's looking at these needs to know what these are. We're going to right click this, and we're going to say emitter, rename, and we're going to call this points, like so. Now we know that these are our points, and you're going to find out why these are our points a little bit later. Next, we need to change their motion. They're all flying straight upwards. This is not the way that we want our wind to work. So we're going to select our initial velocity, and we're going to say our X will set to 200. Our Y maximum will set to 30. Our Z maximum will set to 40. Our minimum X we will set to 150 our minimum y negative 30 and our minimum z negative 40 and what this is going to do is it's going to spray them all off towards the left and some up some down and then if we were to look at them from above it will spray them towards the sides a little bit too but still mostly in our x axis so now they're moving the way that we want them to move, we can start to set up the actual trail. But we don't want this many little wind sprites to actually occur. This is way too many. So what we're going to do is head to our spawn and under our rate, our constant is by default set to 20. We're going to put this to 0.5, like so. There we go. And what this is going to do is it's going to dramatically reduce the amount of particles that we have. So now we're just getting one popping into existence every now and then. Next, we are going to create the actual trail. So right click in the empty space, new particle sprite emitter. And it's going to give us exactly what we had previously. But in this case, we're going to right click emitter rename wind. And now what we're going to do is we're going to set our spawn to zero, nil poi. There we go, nil poi for the spawn. And what we will now do is right click head to type data and set this to new ribbon data. And this is going to allow us to use a ribbon for our trail. Now then, we need this to be attached to our point so that it follows our point. What we'll do is we'll right click, head down to trail, source, and then with source selected, we're going to change our source method to particle. 
so that we can tell our ribbon to follow a specific particle. And the source name we're going to give it is points because we want it to follow our points. You with me? You following? You are. I know you are. Now, we're not getting anything spawn here. And the reason we're not is because we set the spawn to zero. Now, we don't want to just give this a flat number. What we're going to do is we're going to give this a spawn per unit. So we'll right click spawn, spawn per unit. And what spawn per unit does is it takes a scalar of units. So you can see here it's set to 50 as default. And then it will spawn X amount of particles every time our source has traveled that far. Now 50 units is quite large. So we're going to say every one unit, we will spawn one particle. And now what you'll probably see is we get this nasty jiggy jaggy thing whee, following behind our little uh, point. The reason we're getting this nasty jiggy jaggy is because our wind particle has a velocity. If we turn this off, you'll notice that we just have a nice stretchy boy. So we've got the nice stretchy boy. This is where we can head to our material, which is wind lines, and we can head to the winds required and drag our material in, or just use the drop down and search for your material. Now you'll notice that it's gonna go back to looking default for a while. This is just because it's changing the automatic flags of the material. And now you can see here, it's updated. Now we're getting this nice stretched circle. It's a bit thick, a bit of a thick boy. So what we will do is we will change our initial size on the X here down to maybe three maximum and two minimum. And that should give us a nice thin streak. The next thing that we want to do is we want to make sure that we're getting the motion of the waviness. Now, ribbons are very, very funny. Um, ribbons will follow certain particles in certain instances. If we were to add an orbit to our point, the actual ribbon will follow where the point would have gone prior to the orbit. And the reason for that is orbit doesn't move the actual particle, it only moves the sprite. And there are a couple of other instances in Cascade that do this, uh, so it won't look like the wind is following, but it actually is. It's just the sprite has been offset from the particle in the orbit, so it, it looks weird, doesn't actually align. So what we will do is we're going to fake that sort of motion by using an, uh, a velocity over life. So with our points selected, right click, velocity, velocity slash life. And now you'll notice that our point doesn't move anymore and we're not getting any trail. And this is because the velocity over life is just set to nothing. So our velocity over life is just saying when it spawns, velocity zero, no movement. To fix this, we'll open up the velocity over life and then under our distribution with our points, we're gonna give this four points because we're gonna change the direction four times. And we'll just quickly expand all of these open like so. We'll leave default with an in value. Now the in value is the time of zero. And then in the others, we'll put 0.25, which is a quarter of its life, then 0.5 for halfway through its life, and then 0.75 for three quarters of its life. It's still not gonna have anything because you can see here, all of our numbers here are zero. So we'll set one, one, one. And now this is, a multiplication so it's going to be taking our velocity and at zero of its lifetime so when it's spawned it's going to multiply that by one on the x the y and the z you can see then at a 0 0.25 it's immediately going back to zero 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 but we want this to remain at one for the x and the y because we don't want it to sh to wave backwards and forwards we want it to wave up and down one one and now to make it go downwards we must negative one on the z and it will take the z and it will multiply that by negative one so we'll get our first wave where it tries to go either up or down so you can see here we're already getting like a little bit of a curve in some instances uh, so next one 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 because we need to go back up again and then one one negative one because we want it to go back down so what we'll now do is we'll head back into our little map here we'll just get rid of that and we will place our particle system in the world and we'll just wait for some to spawn now you can see here they're not really lasting very long but you can see that we're getting that wave what we're going to do is open our particle system back up and increase the lifetime of our points to 
minimum of four seconds and a maximum of five seconds. So we get some that last a little bit longer than others. And now we can see we're getting this waviness We, But did you see that? When that one dies, the next one gains the trail. And the next one gains the trail and dies, the next one gains the trail. The reason this is happening is because our ribbon data only allows for one trail. We're going to take our max trail count under our ribbon data and increase that to 10. We're never really going to have 10 on screen, but we're going to do this just to be safe. Now, if we were to look again, you can see that all of them will have themselves a trail until they pop out of existence and the trail will fade off and die. So we're starting to get what we want here, but you can see some of our little waves are a little bit weaker than others and we want them to really wave. And the reason this is happening is because in the initial velocity of our points, you can see we have 40 or negative 40, but that isn't the actual values that we're getting. We're getting anywhere between these. So at some points we could get zero, we could get one, two, negative four. We could get anywhere within this range, which is some 80 different values. What we're going to do is we're going to tick the box for use extremes. And what this does is it will pick either the maximum or the minimum, 40 or negative 40. So now you can see we're getting this nice big curve on all of them. Wee, nice big curves. Like so. Pretty nifty. Now we can still see our little crosshair. We don't want to see the crosshair. We're literally just using these as a point to guide our trail. To get rid of this, on the points emitter, you can see this little guy here, these little dots. So this is our sprite, well, our, our sprite mode or particle mode. What we're going to do is we're just going to click this and you can see now we've got a little dot and you can see it's spawning as a little yellow dot instead of our crosshair. We don't want this because this will render the dot. Next through, we have a little, uh, a little hatch. We don't want this. Next is a light. We don't want to set it to light because that's going to be a waste of resources. But the next one is just a yellow cross. These are now not being rendered but their data is still being used. So instead of having a little crosshair or a little spot at the front, we're now just getting a nice wavy boy, yay. Now the next thing that we we're going to do, because they're all spawning from the exact same location, which is just a little bit freaky, is we're going to go to our points, right click, location, and then we're gonna select a sphere. And now what this will do is it will spawn our particle anywhere within a sphere. Now with a sphere selected, if we go to the bottom under cascade, we can go to the 3D draw mode. If we turn this on, we can see the sphere and our particles can spawn anywhere within this area. This is a very tiny area. We're just gonna change our radius up to maybe 200. That's a nice a large area that they can spawn in. So we should get some really nice different locations for their spawning. And you can see we're, just getting really tiny trails. They're not very, very long. So what we're gonna do on the actual ribbon data's lifetime, we're gonna increase our values. So we'll say maybe two seconds to four seconds. We don't want these to last longer than our actual points, because if they do, they will snap back to where the particle spawned and it will look a little bit ugly. But now you can see we're getting some that are really nice and long and some that are a little bit shorter, but you can see that they're really going for it. Now you see this one grew a little bit there and the reason that grew a little bit is because some previous ones died and we can change this by heading to our ribbon data and just upping our max particle in trail count to maybe 1000 instead of 500 and this will allow more particles to be spawned like so. And now we get our nice wispy wavy windy boys. Yay! Cool. Now, obviously, I did mention earlier, because we're using particle color, you can change the color of your wind. So we can head to the color over life on our winds. And then in our color, if you wanted these to be a different color, we can just set this to a constant and we can set our wind to any color that we want. And it should spawn them with that color like so. And that is how we can make these cute little cartoony wind lines using cascade yay there we go nice 
As always, a big thank you to all of my Patreons, and if you'd rather just download these files directly, they will be available on my Patreon page to anybody that is supporting me over there. Again, massive thank you for all the support that I've ever received since the channel started. It's thanks to you that I've managed to acquire the Epic Mega Grant, and I really couldn't be happier about it. Um, it's a fantastic opportunity, and it's going to allow me to spend a fair amount more time um, creating tutorials. I am still full-time employed, um, so the tutorials are going to be worked on over the weekends. Um, but yeah, there we go. I'm going to be creating a lot of new content for you guys using newer versions of the engine, as well as going over older content and updating it using newer features inside of Unreal. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.